Hey guys, Ash Lane here coming at you today answering a bunch of your questions that you recently asked me on the forums. I did kind of an AMA type thing, ask me anything on the Supercell forums. I am a pretty active member of the Supercell forums for the last few years, so I selected a few of your questions to answer in an episode with you guys today. Let's hop right into it here. HHGGFF asks, what is your opinion on bunnies? Do they exist? If so, how is SC supposed to deal with them? Nah, who am I to kid? You're one of their inner circle of course you will adopt their hide it under the rug policy move along nothing to see here well he must not be a subscriber of mine because you guys know i've been mentioning this for literally over a year now i have a few episodes devoted only to modding and as you can see the hammer actually dropped today the day i'm releasing this video these are just some screenshots of the uh, x mod facebook pages people are kind of in a panic People who have used, continued to use modding or third-party software on their devices ever since the warning that Supercell put out a, uh, a, what about a week ago now today? So that is a word of caution for people out there who might still be modding, is that despite what they tell you on their Facebook pages, those companies, uh, they're, they are not beyond detection by Supercell. They are really, they, you know, trust me, I know Supercell very well. They would not have put this out there so aggressively if they were were not that confident that they would be able to detect their uh, devices using third-party software. Uh, very important to note that uh, sharing accounts is technically against terms of service as well. So I know obviously a lot of modding clans do share accounts and if somebody else is logging onto your account, even if they're not logging onto it with with a iMod or XMod uh, you know, program open, but if they have that installed on that device, your account still might be susceptible to be banned. These are going to be rolling bans. You guys already know this by now. Meaning that why, some people are asking, why has this guy been kicked and this guy, or this guy been banned rather and this guy not have been banned when they're both modders? Well, that's because there are rolling bans. I'm not going to get into the specific reasons why they're doing rolling bans, but they will continue from now until the end of Clash history. So, certainly, I've always been against modding, if not for the past or the present, but mostly for the future, because I have always been a strong advocate of adding tournaments or more competitive gameplay to the game. Every time I bring one of those videos, I get a lot of people sarcastically commenting who cares about any of these new competitive modes unless they fix the uh, the deal, you know, the whole modding and cheating scene in Clash of Clans that had gotten a little bit out of control lately in terms of the number of people doing it. So now we're finally seeing answers from Supercell. Kudos to them. I think this is what we need again uh, in order to have these more competitive modes added to the game. We don't want people, uh, two groups of people, people with a huge unfair advantage against terms of service, and we don't want people who have, uh, who really value the fair play element of the game at a huge disadvantage for any type of game modes added to the game. Also, I should mention that one of our alliance, not a member of Red Elite, but a number, a member of one of our other clans in our Clash of Clans alliance has been banned. So we are not above it. I'm not trying to uh, play the holier-than-thou card. I'm sure we have uh, even more than just that one guy. But we do. I can, can confirm today that we have had our first ban, and he has been kicked from our alliance. Uh, we have a very, uh, except, you know, I've never been one to dig into the minutia of witch hunts and you know who's cheating who is not cheating we've always just stated publicly that we do not uh, condone the use of third-party software in our clans and our alliance but we don't go on these huge elaborate witch hunts where we have to you know have people uh, mail you know, fly over and check to make sure someone doesn't have anything installed in their device so anyway let's go ahead and move on to the next question all right so it's try star carnage says Pretend you gave up YouTubing and you had this opportunity. Let's say SC offered you to hire you as the director of the Clash of Clans team, and you loved everything about the offer and position. What would your most significant key projects, as well as how would you like to accomplish them to restore a positive forum attitude, as well as trust, and extend the life of Clash of Clans for another five years? Okay, great question. So I actually did have a video maybe about two weeks ago now, pretending this same question 
question, right? Pretending that I was on the Clash of Clans team. There'd be a lot of things that I would like to see in the game, and of course I'm not always going to get my way because I'm only one player, and uh, just as all you are, we're only one players, and, and in general, my audience, my viewership, tends to represent a more hardcore player, so we always have to keep in mind that we speak through our own lenses, or we see the Clash world through our own lenses. So with that said, I think there's a few things that need to be addressed. One, I'd like to see a new game mode in 2016, hopefully sooner rather than later, but I'd love to see a tournament mode or a new Speed War mode. I think Speed Wars would be the answer to a lot of uh, issues that people are having right now in Clash of Clans, mainly the lack of that fresh feeling or the lack of needing and feeling that huge desire and drive to stay in front of your device for hours or, or even minutes at this point at a time. Right now, the way farming is set up really tends to uh, to benefit people who use heavier armies. And the issue there is people are logging on, getting one attack in. The loot is great, don't get me wrong, but the problem is they're only logging in once an hour or two to get one attack in, and then that leaves chat feeling a little bit stale. So my two priorities would probably be adding something to the game, which dramatically decreases the amount of time it takes to cook a farming army. Uh, there's a lot of ways I, you know, you can go ahead and watch my videos where I really dig into the uh, the, the details on my ideas as far as how to, uh, you know, improve farming capabilities and time. And you know, whether it's the farming stuff or it's the clan, the speed war stuff. The idea here is always to drive up the amount of time that you're playing the game because you want that addicted feeling. At least I do when I'm playing a game. I want a game to feel like I can't put it down. And right now, that's lacking in Clash of Clans. So those would be, that would be the problem I'd most want to address. And then from there, I'd have a few different solutions. I'll link those videos in the description below, both for my tournament idea and for my Speed Wars and farming update idea. So let's go ahead and hop to the next question. All right, so the real Jinji says, uh, what would you do to improve the bowler so more people use it? And also, he's on a movie marathon, just finished V for Vendetta. Is there any classic, iconic movies that you would recommend? Great questions. So let's cover the movie question first, because that's a little bit more fun. Uh, so my favorite movie of all time is probably a toss-up between Forrest Gump and Shawshank Redemption. Uh, love Forrest Gump. Maybe I'll give it to Forrest Gump. I think it's just a classic and uh, absolutely love it. Lately, I just saw a movie called Coherence. Absolutely mind-blowing concept. Really liked it. It's kind of like an alternate universe type uh, singularity moment. It's it's pretty cool. Multiverse, I, sh I should say. And I looked up movies like that, and I actually watched a movie called Triangle. I don't know if it's necessarily a good movie, but it's definitely outside the box, and it really blows your mind. I like movies like that. I was a fan of Interstellar for that reason as well. As far as what to do about the bowler. Well, I've been using the bowler a lot, still in almost all my clan war attacks, uh, despite the uh, constant nagging uh, from my clan mates for using them all the time. I'm still using bowlers. I really want to learn the troop. I really want to, uh, you know, use it effectively as well. And for the most part, I am using it effectively. However, it's with a combination of Valkyries, which are so powerful right now. So I tend to think that it's the Valkyries oftentimes doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and I might be winning despite the bowlers not because of them, but they do do a good job at creating an inner funnel, if you will, a funnel on the inside of the base, starting out with a bowler walk. I'll go ahead and link a bowler walk video in the description below. I think to make them better and more useful, I wouldn't change the troop capacity. I know a lot of people re uh, prefer them to cost less in terms of troop numbers, so I think a lot of people would prefer six. I would leave them at eight personally, and I would make them more powerful, so I'd make their DPS go a little bit higher especially on their second boulder and I would also make them maybe a little bit less squishy maybe a few more hit points and another thing that could dramatically make them more effective is if you increase their throw rate so not even change their DPS but just uh, make them throw the bowler a little bit faster that could also make them uh, more uh, more useful in game so let's hop into the next question Okay, so the, this one comes from Play Tag. His first question, uh, he has five questions, so let's get to them all rapid fire. His first question I already answered, it was about the uh, COC dev team, what I'd change. 
Uh, number two is he thought ClashCon was super boring last year. He stayed up all night to watch the live stream only to watch a bunch of Clan War tournaments. They showed Town Hall 11, Eagle Artillery, and the Mystery Hero at the beginning, but that was it. If there's going to be another ClashCon this year, what do you think Supercell needs to do to make it interesting? Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and read all his questions so I can take it off the screen, and then we'll go ahead and answer them one by one. Number three, I saw this article shows how much money Chief Pat spent on Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. Care to share how much you've spent on both games so far? And number four, do you currently play any uh, console or PC games? If so, what games? And number five, I noticed you have a bunch of tats, but I can't make out what they are. Care to share what they are and why you decided to get those tats, and are you planning to get more? All right, so let's start with ClashCon. So ClashCon, I agree that it was, it was a bit lackluster. I think a lot of people were under the same imp impression that you were uh, in, in terms of that they didn't know it was just going to be a Clan War tournament with a quick announcement at the beginning. Of course, live on the ground, it was a lot of fun. And I'm not saying that, uh, I'm saying that totally, totally genuinely. It was a blast to be there. I hosted a couple workshops, I think four workshops, and I talked on one panel. I did a Clan War panel, how to win uh, Clan Wars more successfully, and I did some Lava Loonian or Go La Loon workshops, and people were really, really engaged there, but it did not translate very well to the stream. This year, I mean, my number one takeaway, I mean, there's so many things that can be done to make it interesting. I'm going to leave all my ideas maybe for a future episode, but the biggest thing in terms of what I would like to see is more direct engagement with the Clash team. I mean, it is ClashCon after all, right? We want to talk to the developers. We want to hear what's on the way. We want to hear what they don't like in the game. We want to hear what they do like in the game. We want to hear what direction they see the game going this year, next year in five years we just want to interact with the clash team because it's all about clash of clans so i didn't feel like we got that last year and that's what i'm really hoping for number one this year i want to see some panels with the clash team i want to know what what it's like on a day i mean i already know these things but i think it'd be so fascinating to know what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis, how they operate inside the Clash team, what are they like, what are their goals, do they play the game a lot, how do they play test for updates, answering questions, all these type of things would be really awesome. So that would be my number one recommendation for how I'd like to see a successful Clash Con. So his next question was regarding the... Oh yeah, how much have I spent on the games? Well, I can tell you for tax-related uh, purposes, because we are able, as YouTubers, to uh, claim money spent on the game, that I spent, between both games combined, a little over... $2,500 last year, so a significant amount of, uh, of money, actually it wasn't both games combined because I don't think I spent much, if anything, on Clash Royale last year, so I guess that was all in Clash of Clans, so $2,500, most of that just on donations because I am almost totally maxed out. So his next question was, do I play any other console or PC games? The answer to that is, sadly, no. Well, not really. I play 8-bit Nintendo, believe it or not, and that's actually, that's actually true. It's, uh, I do find some sort of nostalgia and stress relief off of playing old school NES games. So I, my favorite game of all time is Dragon Warrior for Nintendo, and I'm a big fan of the Castlevania franchise, so I like playing Castlevania 1, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, and Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, and I play them pretty often. I also love uh, Mighty Bomb Jack and Jackal to play with friends. Aside from that, I only play Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Gods of Olympus, and I actually just started playing Vainglory. I've never done a video on it, but uh, having a lot of fun with that too on streams, which I do on Mob Crush every Sunday, 2 p.m. Be there. Uh, so my tattoo is the last question. Well, a lot of them have meaning, and a lot of a few of them don't as well. Uh, my my left sleeve is just Japanese artwork that I really liked a decade ago when I got it done. Uh, some of them is a tribute to close friends and my brother and uh, other stuff as well. Some uh, I I'm not a uh, religious person, but one on my right arm, there are some uh, Buddhist uh, themes, and uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Eastern philosophy and, uh, in that regard, so I got some of that type of artwork on my right arm as well. So that's pretty much it, and nothing incredible, well, I shouldn't say nothing. There are some incredibly meaningful ones, but a lot of them all also just purely aesthetical. I don't see myself getting any more. In fact, I haven't gotten a tattoo in 
almost 10 years, believe it or not. So I'm an old man at 34. So, uh, hey, we'll just have to uh, wait and see. You never say never, but it hasn't been something that's been on my uh, agenda or mind recently. Let's hop into the next question. All right, next question comes from Radiating. He asks, how has your clan been impacted by the December update? And what direction do you think the game is going? Is it a direction that you like? All right, great question there by Radiating. So my clan was also negatively affected after the fallout of ClashCon 2015. We had some people just really wanting to see tournaments or new war features added to the game. We had the initial frustration that pretty much 99% of the community did revolving around the village guard, around personal break times, people being kicked off. There was just a lot of frustration. Now our eight clans are really, really active in our alliance. They're all super hardcore type A players in the game. Uh, I guess the whales, if you, so to speak, in terms of the gaming world. So not many people quit until real recently. We had about five or six longtime players in my clan quit the game, but two of them have returned since the fair play announcement. So we're still about four people down in our clan, and that really sucks because those six people were really, really active in awesome parts of our clan family. However, we were also lucky enough, really, really lucked out to recruit some really awesome players who are online constantly, great at war, always great. Uh, you know, we're, we have a family-friendly clan, so it's tough to find the type of adult that we want in a family-friendly clan. It's kind of a strange mix, but it works for us. It's worked for over three years now. We're still going strong. So that's kind of the state of my clan right now. We're doing really better than ever, and I'm not just saying that. We're just lucked out in some recruits, and uh, things are just going really well in our clan. Uh, as far as the direction of the game... Well, if you had asked me a couple weeks ago, I might have been more pessimistic, but now is a pretty optimistic time right now. I feel like the fair play announcement does set the table nicely for more competitive modes in the game, and I think that Supercell's moving in the right direction by getting more YouTubers into that quote-unquote inner circle. I know uh, I've, been, I've been pushing, not to say that I'm responsible, certainly they are responsible, and their content speaks for itself, but getting guys like Powerbang and Jake into the uh, the you know the inner quote unquote inner circle, but getting them over there basically on our trips so they can also join me and the other guys talking about the game. People who are really passionate about the game, I think that's a step in the right direction. As far as communication goes, I'd still like to see much more on behalf of the Clash team. But again, they are moving in the right direction. They're they're starting the blog instead of just making changes. They're now telling us why they're making changes. Hey, that's a big step, and you got to take that first step somewhere. So I am positive and optimistic about the future of Clash of Clans. I do think that some new game modes have to be added. There has to be things coming in 2016. For now, we're pretty happy with the fair play announcement, and I have uh, been able to take a peek at one or two of the new features that will be coming, you know, maybe not next update, but in updates to come, hopefully sooner, like I said, rather than later. So let's go ahead and end this Q&A episode now. Thank you so much for taking out the last 20 minutes of your day to hang out with me, listen to my answers, and taking an interest in both me, my channel, and the game that we all love so much. So guys, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, take care. We don't play for fame, we don't play for cash. We just play for the glory and the crash of the ash.